Hi, I'm Matt. I'm Desmond. And uh, we're here to review the new 2021 Ford Bronco today. It is the 2021 Ford Bronco Big Ben. So this would be one step up from your entry level Bronco. The front, you get LED fog lights. Um, the Big Ben is equipped with 17 inch uh, carbonized gray aluminum wheels. You get your 17 inch Continental Pro Contact tires. You get a Big Ben badge right here. Um, around back, you get some LED tail lights. Oh yeah, that's nice. Now the Bronco has recently debuted. This is the Bronco Sport right here. Um, so this would be your smaller uh, Bronco. It would compete with vehicles like the Chevy Trailblazer. Um, and a neat feature that the Bronco has that not many SUVs are equipped with is the glass itself. You're able to open the glass and so if you don't want to lift the hatch to put cargo in the back and you just need to grab a bag this is a handy feature now a couple other items specific to the big bed would be the back seat area here you get zip up pockets which is a, a feature for the big bend You get uh, easy to clean upholstery, Ford calls it. It's pretty soft and it's supposed to be spill and stain resistant and as they say, easy to clean. Um, there's a cool feature here, which is this Mustang, uh, the Mustang look, which is the horse. That I like, uh, they've been putting that along a lot of their other uh, vehicles in Ford. It's their unique uh, logo. They got their Bronco. Yeah. Then you got these rubber mats that you can take out for cleaning, but as a general vehicle for Maine, this is perfect and awesome, easy clean. Now I noticed there's a little bit of a pleather feel to the some of the seats here, but then the center is more cloth based. I'm not sure the uh, idea behind that, but it's kind of nice. It's it's a different feel. It's nice too that I've noticed that the um, the actual rubber mats provide a decent depth to them too, so they don't just lay on the floor, but they have a nice height to them yep. to keep materials from coming out, which is important. Now you got the general, you know, cup holders here. I got still room for a six foot guy. I still got knee room, not a whole lot. You can't really adjust a whole lot when you're in a long travel, but it gives you plenty of comfort for you know a little distance. Uh, you got your pockets here on the side of the your seat here if you have a smaller phone or if you want to hide something on someone you got your normal USB ports back here USB-C normal USB your normal air vents you don't have any light control over here though these are all well this one does have clicky features to it <laughs> um, also a feature of the Badlands is a rubberized cargo floor yep. so if you want to fold the seats down let's take a look at the uh, I can get my feet out of this so this button right here we can fold this seat down, but you got to fold the headrest down too. There you go. So as you can see, the whole sort of cargo floor is rubberized. You have a cargo tray right here, but underneath it is also rubberized. So you sort of have a it's a double. softer. It's a softer rubber, though. I feel like it, it definitely is. This is an actual like harder rubber. So I mean, if you really needed to haul something. You could fold the seats down and there is plenty of space in here. Also are these hooks, which is a really neat feature. They have sort of a locking device to keep anything from sort of coming out of them. Got your 12 volt charger right here. You got some batteries, uh, not battery, uh, lights right here. You also have a switch right here to turn the lights on back here. This is a cool feature for camping. You can adjust the light to different angles. That way if you lose something or you want to do something where you need light, there you go. And that's the button for it right here. Got more hooks on this side. 
On this light right here, and again, we have another horse, which is pretty cool, another Bronco. On the back of this window here, you got the, uh, the good old Ford Bronco, the old one. You also have a couple handles to close the latch, close the hatch from the back, and you have some hooks for a cargo net. Right there. Comes, goes up nice. You got your, your spare tire underneath. Um, so we'll start off as well with the powertrain and this particular Bronco. Equipped with the 1.5 liter EcoBoost. But before we show you under the hood, there was a little bit of a kind of a quirky feature, I would call it, um, about opening the hood on this new Bronco. So if you look over here, here's your hood latch. Now it has a a two times on it so basically what they want you to do is you have to pull the latch twice which is kind of strange so there we go now under the hood the reasoning behind this I've noticed is that there's no safety latch once you pull the latch twice the hood just opens up and then you have your prop rod which I have to knock auto manufacturers these days for doing prop rods. When I do reviews, I kind of want to knock things and I, we're, we're past this now. Um, this would be your 1.5 liter EcoBoost. It's 181 horsepower and it's 190 pound-feet of torque and it is mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission. Surprisingly, there is uh, a decent amount of room in this engine bay. I've never seen that before, this new style. Everything's well laid out. You have your washer fluid reservoir, you got your coolant, you have your battery over here, your fuse panel, your, your dipstick right there as they call it, the oil refill. And then shutting the hood. It also feels kind of awkward to shut the hood. You don't feel it go down. You just have to press. Another thing I wanted to point out on this particular model is that the grill is kind of strange in a sense that it's cut out here, but there are no cutouts here. So you have like a semi-fake and semi-real grill. Do you know the reason for that? What is it? These, there's flaps on the inside here that open up for air intake. Oh, your winter front, yes, they call it. Uh, that is actually a popular item for new vehicles now. You get your, your winter front, so I get that. I'm just wondering why they only did it for half. You got your cool LED lights here. They go all the part of the bumper, the part of the grill. Yeah, this one doesn't have a whole lot of off-roading uh, off capabilities for approach, as you can tell. A lot of uh, a lot of plastic here that can rub up against stuff. That's kind of a con of uh, sort of a more entry-level model is you'll tend to find more plastic trim until you get up to a more expensive model where you get sort of either body color or just overall less plastic trim. Yeah. Um, on, the, on the inside of the Bronco, this one is equipped with remote start. Also, you have your Ford infotainment display right here. Um, now on this model you do get cross traffic alert, you do get blind spot monitoring, um, you do have cruise control on the steering wheel, you do have your navigation to get through your display screen so if you hit menu now it says that we've been getting about 20.8 miles to the gallon you have my view, you have driver assistance, which when you're using your cruise control, this allows you to set your gap or your following distance for vehicles. 
you have your music, your phone, and then over here, you have your transmission, your gear select, which is a rotary dial. You have your backup screen. The screen is fairly clear, and it is actually a very large screen for an entry-level model. It's about a seven-inch screen. It does come in really clear. You also have, if you're going to hook up a trailer, this does have trailer sway control as well. And another feature this has is the ability to hold while you're in traffic, say you're on a hill, or say you just want to take your foot off the brake pedal but you don't want to put it in park. You hit the button here, we're in drive. I take my foot off the brake and we're not moving. But as soon as I'm ready to move, I just touch the gas pedal and the vehicle moves. You can also, it will come on every time until you turn it off. So it's doing it again. And then if we want to disable it, we just turn it off. You also have your start stop, which is the industry standard for most new vehicles now. Luckily, thankfully, Ford still created a way to shut it off. Thank you, Ford. You have very basic controls for your stereo. You have your mute, your skip, your pause, your play. And then you have your standard Ford infotainment, which has audio, phone. You have apps and settings. And then in here, is, which is actually a way that I like that Ford has done this, is rather than having a button to turn off your traction control, you just turn it off in the infotainment right here. Here are some of your options. I like the simplicity of being able to choose and do the 24 hour feature here. Overall, I think that it's a pretty well laid out vehicle. For being sort of basic, you get your compass and then you can connect your phone and it would display here. Um, this does have automatic climate control and it has sort of a different automatic control, a climate control than what I've seen. You have sort of a low, medium and a high setting for your climate control. So in the high setting, it seems to keep the ventilation or the the HVAC up at sort of a, a fast pace and then corresponding you have medium and low and then let's talk about the way the interior looks for a minute now as far as it look you know for the dash you have sort of like a rubberized layer right here which I guess would provide good protection and, and spill resistance. It would be easier to clean. Definitely a lot of rubbery, plasticky materials. Uh, these buttons are fairly durable, I'd say, for the the price tag that they offer. They actually are impressive. They grip. There's a really good grip to them. Um, and also, I will say this little compartment right here is very handy. It does fit a phone really nicely in here. Um, and then you also have space down here, which has a small little divider. You could put another phone right here, maybe. Put some change right here, maybe. Yeah, you could put some change there. You have a 12 volt power outlet. USB-C and USB. Yep, you have your USB-C and your standard USB connector. You have over here, here's your armrest. And then inside you have a console. With another 12 volt power outlet um, and then here you have what Ford calls goat mode so basically this is your terrain select now if you grab this knob you can turn it and inside you have sand normal eco sport and slippery so sport of course will be tried out um, over here you have your lane keeping system, so you can basically 
when you're going down the road it will stay in the lane that you want it to and there is steering assist you can adjust the sensitivity um, you have your standard you know blinker control high low beams over here you have your wiper controls for your rear windshield wiper and your front you have power mirrors on both sides you also have your indicator in the mirror for blind spot monitoring you do have power doors power windows you do have the one touch uh, driver side there is not uh, one touch for all the other windows in this particular model you have the general plastic handles here, the general plastic buttons for lock and unlock, and your window button here. Uh, overall, this is a lot of, uh, I'd say a lot of plastic. Yeah, I would say you're right. I'd say it's really plasticky. And your headlight switch also over here. Um, you have your headlight switch right down here. You do have automatic headlamp control. You also have fog lamps. There's your button right there. You have your dimmer, and then you have your cargo door in the back. You can open it by pushing the button. Now, overall, I think I think Desmond's right. I think that there is a lot of plastic in here. It is sort of an entry level model, um, but if you're if you live in sort of like a little suburban environment and you're just looking for something to get around, pick up the groceries, maybe go down a small dirt road I don't think that this vehicle would be out of the question this would be the perfect vehicle for that I could see this being for my wife I, I my wife would drive this and we could transport the kids we could go pick up stuff at the mall the the comfort level in this is actually pretty good it, it is actually fairly comfortable these cloth seats do provide a decent level what, what would you say yeah, they're 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 fairly average. Um, I'm more of a leather seat type of guy. I was noticing this coffee holder here, but these plastic little bumps go in. Yes, the only disadvantage of these plastic bumps is me having owned previous Ford models. If you put a cup that's fairly too big in them, they do break. They do break. Oh. It's unfortunate, but they do break. Now, what exactly would you put right here? They have a uh, little mounts you can put inside for um, your like cell phone. Like a cup phone cup from WeatherTech, yeah. Yep. And then also, uh, we also have a low range for the transmission as well that I did not talk about. So if you hit low, we have the ability to basically be in low gear. That would help when going downhill. Now in this model you don't get any sort of paddle shifting or anything. There's no way to actually control the transmission other than what gear you're putting it in. Um, we will take it out on the road though and try out sport mode. Alright, what do you think of this hole? Well, so I feel like um, the Bronco, you know, it feels like your average vehicle I'm driving it. Um, Desmond and I both noticed sort of a little bit of a, a thing going on with the Bronco though when you drive it. We noticed that it tends to have a lot of vibration. I'm not sure what that's linked to, but um, when you're sitting idle sort of in a parking lot or whatnot, there is a lot of vibration from the engine. Um, I'm, it's not really a bad thing. It's just, it takes a little getting used to. As far as its driver, its drivability goes so far, it seems it seems to be smooth. The transmission seems to keep you down low, so you're you know using as little fuel as possible. And then when we get it on a nice little straight, we can you know see what it can do as far as acceleration goes. Again, we do have the 1.5 liter. There is an available two liter four cylinder um, that has a little bit more power. That one is equipped with 245 horsepower and, and uh, 275 pound-feet of torque. So if you're looking for a little bit more performance, that would be the way to go. Um, 
But this one, if I were to rate it, I would say it's sufficient. Meaning, you don't really get too much. You don't get too little. It's kind of, it just does the job. I'm not going to go home and say, Oh God, that Bronco was so fast. Again, it is a Bronco. We're not, we're not looking for speed. It will be interesting when the bigger Bronco comes out to see and feel the performance of that one. I think when it comes down to comparison to Jeep Compass and Jeep Renegade, yes. The thing that is nice about turbo engines though is you get like that low end torque. So you can feel like the low end torque, but... But all in all, this has a decent amount of room in the back. You can put a lot of different things in there. All right, we're approaching our area where we can attempt some acceleration. The brakes work very well. Uh, it's good to be in Maine this time of year. Yes, all the tourists and everyone else. Again, adequate acceleration. That best describes it. Yep. In sport mode, I didn't really notice much of a difference compared to normal mode. Um, maybe the shifts were a little bit higher than maybe in normal mode but it really kind of felt the same to me i guess when you're at this power level it it really doesn't make too much of a difference and i am not an engineer but having driven many vehicles that's sort of how i feel it's definitely uh it definitely does its job for the market it's it's aiming for uh, the normal bring children to schools go basic camping um, sports after school the sort of performance enthusiast in me says what will the aftermarket do to this down the road will there be tunes for it to make it even quicker will people put exhaust kits on it I always am sort of intrigued about that, and I'd be willing to bet that that will probably exist. It would be interesting to compare a tuned Bronco against a stock Bronco to see the sort of the difference in performance. After all, Ford has sort of been the master of marketing their turbo engines in all of their vehicles. They have a turbo application for just about everything. Next question, will a Bronco be able to beat a new WRX? We won't go there. Because <laughs> there's one right next to us. Uh, too bad. That'll be fun to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, overall, it's very quiet in here as far as ride goes. I don't really hear much. It seems, for its price range, it seems to be a fairly quiet vehicle. The, the vibration from the engine was the only questionable thing I noticed when I was driving it. I wasn't sure why there was that vibration, but I think it's it feels like it's gone now. It might have been just because it was cold. So, I noticed this handle's a little awkward when opening the glove box. I don't know why, but that's just a design I'm not a fan of. You got your cool little sticky job here on the air vents. I'm not sure why that's the way it is, but it's a cool little feature. So uh, tell us what you think of uh, this vehicle in the comments below and like us and follow us. And Thank you Yankee Ford and South Portland for letting us use this Bronco.